this triumphant seedling is composed of many active cells. Inside each of these cells, countless chemical reactions are constantly occurring. To sustain these reactions, cells need abundant energy, which comes in the form of a molecule called ATP. Cells produce ATP during cellular respiration. Cellular respiration occurs in organelles called mitochondria. The mitochondrial electron transport chain is a key component in cellular respiration. The objective of this tutorial is to help you understand the steps of the electron transport chain. All eukaryotes have mitochondria. Let's focus on a plant. Each plant consists of several cells, each of which have mitochondria. A mitochondrion has an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Between the outer and inner membranes is a space called the intermembrane compartment. The inner membrane encloses fluid called the matrix. The reactions of the electron transport chain occur across the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. Cellular respiration is a multiple step process. Glycolysis and Krebs cycle produce a small amount of ATP and also produce electron carriers called NADH and FADH2. The electron carriers then travel to the electron transport chain where the electrons they deposit provide the energy to produce many ATP. In fact, most of the ATP that a cell generates is the product of reactions of the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is a series of four proteins embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So let's start our tour of the electron transport chain with the first membrane protein. NADH donates the two electrons it received during glycolysis or the Krebs cycle to the first enzyme of the electron transport chain. These two electrons will then travel through the second, third and fourth proteins. Follow the arrow from the two electrons at the first enzyme through the other electron carriers. The electrons release energy as they travel through the proteins that make up the electron transport chain. As we will see, the mitochondrion uses this energy to produce ATP. Now, look at the second enzyme of the transport chain. FADH2, which is produced in the Krebs cycle, contributes electrons to the transport chain at this second enzyme. Like the electrons donated by NADH, the electrons donated by FADH2 also release energy as they travel through the third and fourth membrane proteins of the transport chain. Now, look at the fourth enzyme of the transport chain. Since this enzyme is at the end of the transport chain, it has to get rid of the electrons that it's acquired from the third protein in the chain. Otherwise, the whole chain will stop working as the carrier proteins become clogged with electrons. At the fourth enzyme, the electrons are getting dumped onto an oxygen, which is called a terminal electron acceptor. The oxygen then immediately reacts with free hydrogens to form water, one of the end products of respiration. Oxygen's role as a terminal electron acceptor explains why this gas is essential to the survival of most cells. So what happens with all the energy released by the electrons moving through the transport chain? Notice the hydrogen ions that are passing through the first, third and fourth enzymes. These enzymes use the energy released by the electrons to actively pump hydrogen ions from the matrix to the intermembrane compartment. This process creates a hydrogen ion gradient, also called a proton gradient, meaning that the concentration of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane compartment is now higher than it is in the matrix. Now, focus your attention on the ATP synthase protein at the bottom of the figure. If you follow the black arrow through ATP synthase, you'll see that the hydrogen ions enter ATP synthase from the intermembrane compartment and move through it to the matrix by facilitated diffusion. Since the hydrogen ions are moving from a high concentration to a low concentration, they're going from a high energy state to a low energy state and are therefore releasing energy. In a process called chemiosmotic phosphorylation, ATP synthase uses this energy from the hydrogen ion gradient to add a phosphate to ADP, producing ATP. The cell uses the ATP as an energy source that powers the cell's chemical reactions. 
For example, the cells of this seedling require much ATP to produce proteins and replicate DNA. Cellular respiration, and especially the electron transport chain, provides the ATP this seedling uses as it grows into a plant.